Okay guys, so now we see how do you create OUs and users in the server using graphics. First of all, what is an OU? You can say OU is a department. For example, in your companies, you have various departments like IT, sales, HR, finance, and so on. So for each particular department, you create an OU. So OU is nothing but a department. Now, how do I create an OU? I go to tools and in tools, I have the option active directory, users and computers. So now, you can see the domain that is test.lab and in this domain, you need to create an OU. How do you do it? You've got two options. One is the shortcut icon to create an OU or else right click, new, OU. So you've got two options either from the right click or the shortcut icon. Now, I can name this, you may say, HR. And as you can see, there's an option which says protect the container. Container means OU. Protect the container from accidental deletion. It is selected by default. Now, what does this mean? If I try to delete this OU, it will not get deleted. Why so? So this is a safety measure. What happens is, let us assume that by mistake, I delete an OU. So once the OU is deleted, all the user accounts in that OU will get deleted. No employee would be able to take login. Hence, to avoid such a huge loss, the container, the OU is protected from deletion. Now, the question is, what if I genuinely want to delete this? So to do it, I will have to go to view, enable the advanced features. Now, how do I know it whether it is enabled or not? So you can make this out from the check mark. Now, if I go to the properties of this OU, I would be able to see the third tab, which is known as object and an object. I get this option protect from accidental deletion. So I simply uncheck this box. And now if I try to delete this, ta -da, it's deleted. So this is how you can delete a specific OU. So now let's create one. So I say it's for the IT department. And in this department, I need to create users. So the shortcut icon, as you can see here, or else right click, new user. So I give him the name Mike. And this is the login name, which also happens to be the email ID for the user mike at test.lab. And this is the name actually through which he would be able to log in into his system. Last name, it's optional. You can give it or not, it's your wish. And initials, what is initials? Something that is attached before the name. For example, Mr. or Mrs. or Dr. Password definitely has to be complex. Letters, numbers and symbols. Now what are these options? So the first says that the user will have to change the password at the first login. And this is the option selected in most of the companies. What happens is the admin or the person in charge creates multiple user accounts, giving them the default password. And once when they try to log in into their account for the first time, they have to change their password and set a personal password that only they know and no one other knows. Second and third options are not much used nowadays. In fact, the third option that you see says password never expires. But nowadays, companies have a policy that in a month or two, their password will expire. That means 
every month or two, you need to change your password. Why? More often, or you may say, more frequent that you change your password, less are the chances of your password getting hacked. And the last option says, account is disabled. If I disable a specific account, that user will not be able to log on into the system. Now, why to disable the account? Maybe because the employee is on a big leave or maybe the employee has left the company. So I do not wish that any other guy can take login from this particular account. It's that easy using the GUI. Just a recap, you just give him a name and password. That's it. And you see the user has been created. So this is the first task, create user with GUI. In the next video, we'll see how do you create users with the help of CLI, that is Command Prompt and PowerShell. Thank you, guys.